Food is a wonderful thing. It gives us energy to survive. It unites friends and families, and countries and cultures. Food is the most relevant thing to all of us, and it has three fundamental parts: smell, taste, and look. But there is always one thing that we look for when we want to make a choice, and that is quality. When it comes to food, quality, in the most fundamental sense, means safety, because what is not safe enough to eat, it's simply not called food. There will be extra two billion people on this planet by 2050, and for that, every nation in the world have to produce 70 percent more food by 2050. But the real challenge here is not only producing enough food, but also produce safe food responsibly. If you look at the animal protein industry, you will see that 80 percent of globally produced antibiotics are used in animals, and only 20 percent in human. That is because we want to produce more food. That is because we want to put more animals in the same space to produce more food. To offset the incurred diseases in an overcrowded farm, antibiotics are abused even before the actual infections come in. Bacteria, like you and I, are striving for survival at all times. They want to survive like you and I. So when you teach them with an ineffective dose of antibiotics, over time they learn how to defend themselves and they evolve. WHO estimates that by 2050. Antimicrobial resistance will kill a staggering 10 million people per year, and that is more than cancer. Until today, Myanmar doesn't have a clear policy on restricting the use of antibiotics in livestock animals. And our farmers, our livestock farmers, are facing more and more problems. That they are finding out that the same antibiotics that they have been using are not effective against their animals anymore. When it comes to the crop farming sites, pesticides are the actual a real problem. This chart shows that the pesticide use in kg per hectare for Myanmar in red and Thailand in blue. At 2016, the volume of the pesticide use is about the same. But what is so alarming is when you look at the trend and when you extrapolate the data, you will see that the trends are going scarily upwards, especially for Myanmar. So why is this all happening? Because we want to produce more food. Apparently, yield is the only measuring stick that we have been using. Why can't we produce safer food yet? Why can't we produce more food yet safer food? I strongly believe that sustainable food production is the only way Myanmar should or must follow. In order to shape Myanmar to become the food production powerhouse, we need three eyes, and the very first eye will be the infrastructure for food safety and technology. A study in 2017 found out that 70% of consumer complaints in Myanmar are related to food, and 95% of those complaints are related to food safety. That's these are staggering numbers, and this is a picture of FDA officials taken in front of a pile of contaminated bean blots that preserve using the illegal preservatives called formaldehyde or formalins. We have many instances like this, starting from aflatoxins contamination in chili powders or unhygienic drinking water bottle productions. So why? Is this food safety issues all happening? Why, why, why is it happening? Food producers, including farmers, are fundamentally lacking two things today: knowledge and technology. And when you lack knowledge, and you don't know things, and when you lack technology, you don't know how to do things. We have been told for many years, for a long time, that we have. Fertile soil, and we have abundant natural resources, rivers and streams. But all these natural infrastructures mean nothing. I repeat, nothing 
if you do not build technological, if you do this on top of that, we need universities, such centers, training centers, innovation hubs, and laboratories, and we need technologists, innovators, entrepreneurs, and those who will bring knowledge and technology to us. We need all of them to work in a very cohesive manner to create that technological infrastructure that serves as a foundation of the thriving agri-food ecosystem. The second eye that we need to shake Myanmar to the food production powerhouse is innovation. Let's start from the top of the food chain. This is not the picture from a. This is not the scene from a science fiction movie. This used to be the old factory in New Jersey, United States. When a U.S. food tech startup took it over and turned that into a vertical indoor farms in 2016, it became a food production factory of vertical farms that produced up to two million pounds of leafy greens and vegetables per year. The fascinating things about、uh, vertical farms is they use 95% less water, zero pesticides, and zero herbicides, and it allowed us to create an environment that is not very favorable for the food pa foodborne pathogens to grow. The result: much safer food with very little environmental impact and resources. I, I understand that、um, in a country like Myanmar, where we have a lot of horizontal land. Vertical farming doesn't sound very plausible, but the key thing here is not about space, but it's about production matrices and efficiency. For example, vertical farms like this can produce up to 390 times more food per square feet than traditional outdoor farms. Now let's have a look at another、uh, example down the、uh, food chain. Um, let's、uh, play a little game, shall we? So,、um, can you tell me which one of the two food in the picture is the actual meat? I'll give you five seconds. Right here is the answer: none. <laughs> none of the food that you are seeing on the screen is the real meat. In fact, they are all made of plant proteins. The 90 billion U.S. dollar Animal protein industry had just got disturbed by these alternative protein startups. So these startups are fundamentally and radically changing the way we eat every single day. If you look at the science behind, what are these drivers that's driving these、um, innovations? I would say it's potential resource scarcity that is driving all these innovations. If you look at the science behind, you will see that it takes six kgs of crops to produce just one kg of meat. That is without putting into considerations of all the natural resources and、um, environmental impacts. Well, I'm not saying that we all should become vegetarians, but I'm saying with the right technology and innovation. You can create the same taste, smell, and texture of the meat without using the actual meat. Now let's have a look at the more relevant example of the innovations to to Myanmar. This scrambled egg, it's not made from the real egg. This egg, it's made from a product of a food tech startup. And the raw material of this product is mung bean. So, if you are curious enough, and when you look it up on the internet, who is the top mung bean grower and exporter in the world is? Voila, you will see Myanmar. In fact, we are fulfilling almost 60 percent of global demands of the mung beans. So, by now, I believe you should have connected the dots. And see the gravity of the situation. Why innovations is so important for us. But on the other hand, innovation needs technologies and know-hows. So without technology and know-how, 
you have abundant natural resources and raw material, this is exactly what happened. If you look at the chart, you will see that today, Myanmar can only export 29% of its agricultural commodities as value-added as value products. At the same time, our very neighboring country, Thailand, is exporting up to staggering 52% of its agricultural products as, as value-added products. This chart shows a lot of things behind, beyond agri-food industry. In fact, this, ch this chart highlights the key differences between the two countries' development. So this brings us to the third I that we need to shape Myanmar into the food production powerhouse, and that is involvement. We need involvement from all the stakeholders to create the paradigm shift. We need involvement from the government, policy mappers, lawmakers, public and private institutions. We need government to create the favorable business environment that encourages businesses to produce more value-added products before they are exported out to raw commodities. We need policy mappers to craft policies starting from export-import strategy to investment attractiveness. And we need regulatory bodies to, to, to enforce the food safety standards and compliances to protect the consumers. And we need the businesses and entrepreneurs to not only create the products, but create the values for the consumers. And we need the private and public organizations to support these entrepreneurs and businesses with resources, including non-financial and financial resources. Now let's take a moment here and let's have a look at these figures that you see on the screen. And there is only one thing or one conclusion that you can reach by seeing these numbers on the screen. When your country's 65% of SMEs are the food producers and 70% of the employment is in agricultural sector, it is very clear, it is very clear to make the decision on which sector your country's economic policy must be built on. It is very clear. During the process of building, we can do this amazing thing called leapfrogging. 95% of Myanmar smartphone users have never seen keypad phones before. So they go from no phones to, to smartphone with full internet access. This is the power of leapfrogging. Similar thing can happen in our agricultural or agri-food industry. We have to leverage on existing issues and problems and challenges and create opportunities for us. We need to leapfrog. So what are the trampolines for us to leapfrog? I would say Technology is the way to go. We need tech. We need tech to help us get things done more efficiently. We need tech to digitalize our farming systems and distribution models. We need tech to help us with the traceability system in our food supply chains. Basically, we need tech for everything. At the, in the age of where the front runners are loudly talking about topics like artificial intelligence and industry 4.0, it would be very wise and prudent for us to jump onto the bandwagon, not because they are fancy and popular, but because we can go very far in a very short amount of time with these leapfrogging technologies. In conclusions, Myanmar's golden age of being the Asia's rice bowl is over. It's, it's over. Now is the time for renaissance. Now is the time for us to rebuild the economy. And we must rebuild it around something that we are very good at. We have access to 3 billion people market around us. We have the shortest food model to 3 billion people around us. We have the market. And we have nature's favor. Now is the time for Myanmar to walk the talk. 
So let's put aside all these arguments, and let's take Myanmar back to the war stage that she deserves and once she belongs. Thank you.